is ultimately a true artist because he's learned everything he possibly can learn about his own culture's music. He's soaked it all up and done something new with it. So I remember the teacher always telling us, we can only give you the tools. So they gave me the tools and um, I came up with it here jazz. Totally takes you off your feet, the grooves and everything, but then it's got the, that scale, the Ethiopian mode, and that's sounds a bit Arabic but it isn't and it's, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's some of the most amazing music ever made and I can say that from the heart. I'm here in London to record with uh, Killer Centrix, that's the name of the group. Beautiful, look at it. Nice jazzy, it's got the jazz look. <laughs> Very jazzy, man. <laughs> Please, after you. Sound cool, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's coming. Let's do it. When I first heard it, I never even dreamed of being in the situation we're in now, where you've got to play with the guy, learn from him. So this group is a very unique. They have a distinct sound of their own, their own way of approaching music. The words used to describe us, psychedelic, Sun, Sun Ra, James Brown, David Axelrod, etc, etc. We don't feel we need a label, we can't describe ourselves, so I don't think anybody else is probably going to be able to either. I mean, if you've got soul, it, it comes out in the music and, and through your instrument, and I think if we lose it, I think that's time to go home really, isn't it? And not call ourselves the heliocentrics. So to blend this with Ethio jazz music was something, a beautiful experience. <laughs> I came over to England when I was about 16 years and I went to a high school in North Wales. There was actually a very good uh, music teacher. That's where I find out my talent and what I am and uh, what I should be in the future. You know? So 15 years, I never had a chance to come to England. So uh, cargo was my next stop after 15 years. We send our music to them, they practice on that music. Playing with him, I think it all sort of fit into place. It was really a great surprise, you know, because uh, it was a different sound. People's reaction, you know, when people started to chant his name, they would see it was like, wow, I haven't had this kind of reaction for a while, you know. The crowds were that even while really a great surprise to me because there were so many young uh, people there. Since I was away, I didn't know I had all this all this kind of fun. And it was really a beautiful experience. Now I'm back again to do more work with them and uh, I'm really enjoying and you know, having fun with this music.
The other thing is we were insistent on using every Ethiopian instrument, yeah. the, the main instrument. So you've got the Gena, which is like a rattly double bass sound. You've got Masinko, which is the one stringed um, bowed violin, the Washint. I mean, the Washint player, he used just a, a copper pipe. And the washing is basically a, a pipe, and he <laughs> he didn't have enough um, notes to be able to play with the tune that we wanted to play on. So he actually said, "Oh, you got a drill," and he got a drill out and just put a new <laughs> hole in the pipe, and he got that note, the elusive note that he was looking for. That's I mean, it, you know, it was, the attitude behind the album. Wasn't yeah, it? It exactly. Like you know, however we could yeah. do it, we would we would make it work. Yeah, somebody lend us some money, will they? Just sort of roof out. <laughs> well, as you can see, we've got a new percussion instrument called Dripping Rain that's uh, going to be playing on this track. Very soft vibe player, very considered vibe player, where some of our music's quite tense and aggressive, so he had to come up to us. It wasn't all about us coming to him. He was well out of the comfort zone yeah. like we were, <laughs> and trying to play traditional Ethiopian rhythms and stuff, but it works. Hey, Let's do I a can... compromise. Hey, this guy is giving me a problem, <laughs> man. I can change my sounds, man. This, this is more like a song. We're right? not changing it, we're tweaking it. Do one your way. And then we'll have a go. No, no, because when I go, I'll, you're going to mix I'll, I'll it your what, own way. You have a, you, know, you, you, know, you know, I don't give the trick. He's going to mix it his own way, though. You, <laughs> you have one mallet, I'll have the other, yeah? We'll share it. You, you do good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For me, personally, as a musician, working with Malatu, it sort of made me sort of hear melodies a bit more. Yeah. And it certainly opened our eyes to a few, a few different things. It's going to be something unique and different from my earlier works or from other musicians I've been working with. With this collaboration, you know, one track doesn't necessarily sound like any other track, even though it's the same unit. Often the best music comes from taking risks. This one is going to be unique because I think they have a unique sound also. Between us, that's the whole thing. It's all about, again, making it work. And that's what we've really, I think we've achieved that. All kind of fusion here is happening, you know. It's going to be something crazy, something really different. 